Now let's understand the closure property. Now the closure property can be verified for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division for whole numbers, for integers, for rational numbers and so on. So let's consider the closure property let's say for whole numbers. Now if you look at whole numbers we have defined it as number starting from 0 and going up to positive infinity. So look at the closure property the first case in terms of addition. Now when we look in terms of the addition we take two whole numbers let's say we are taking 3 and another whole number let's say 5 the result is 8. Now when we add two whole numbers we find that the result is also a whole number. So we can say the closure property is true in case of addition for whole numbers. What about subtraction? When we subtract two whole numbers, let's say 3 and we are subtracting 5 from it, we are going to get minus 2. Now minus 2, if you observe, is not a whole number. So this is an integer. So we can say that for subtraction, the closure property does not hold good. So this is also not holding good. What about multiplication? When we multiply two numbers, let's say 5, this is a whole number, and multiply by another whole number, 3, we get 15. 7 into 0 is equal to 0. We find that when we multiply two whole numbers, the result is also a whole number. So I can say that for multiplication, the closure property holds good. And lastly, let's check for division. Now when we divide two numbers, let's say 5, we are dividing by another number, let's say 3, we are going to get 5 upon 3. Now 5 upon 3 is not a whole number, it is a fraction which is a rational number. So I can say that the closure property for division also does not hold good. So we see that for addition and subtraction, addition it's true, for subtraction it's not true, for multiplication it's true and for division it is not true. So here we have some examples to verify the closure property for whole numbers.